we will be staying across the pond in this week's video and today we'll be looking at the largest steam locomotive ever built. Its name is Big Boy and well, it lives up to its hype. America likes things big, big cars, big houses, but the railroad company Union Pacific also had a very big problem. Its main line between Green River and Ogden had several mountains between them. The mountains were tough to climb and considering the demands for hauling more freight was getting greater, longer trains and larger train weights meant that the trains had to be sometimes doubled or even triple headed. This obviously cost the company not only in manpower but engines as well. The Union Pacific needed a large engine, a very large engine, that could not only do the run in one go, but would be able to cope with the larger and longer trains for the future. Otto Jabelman, who was the head of the Research and Mechanical Standards section of the Union Pacific Railroad, led a team to look at previous plans and designs, particularly the Challenger locomotive, with a view to meeting the Union Pacific's requirements. They calculated that by increasing the firebox size, adding extra driving wheels, increasing the boiler pressure, and making sure the axle load does not exceed 67,800 pounds, the engine could meet the demands the railroad needed. They also calculated that the engine could operate at a steady 80 miles an hour, quite speedy for freight trains of its time. The engine was designed from the ground up and it was clear the engine was going to be massive. It was so big that it had to be specifically articulated to navigate curves. It took over one mile of boiler tubing and a firebox that was over 150 square feet. They calculated that the boiler would be able to consume its entire tender of coal and water in just over two hours. When you consider the tender held 24,000 gallons of water and 28 tonnes of coal, it was a lot of fuel. The team removed some components such as feed water heaters and boosters, and it was considered one of the most complex operation engines to operate. Just looking at the cab alone and the sheer number of valves and gauges is testament to that. The crews, however, found them very user-friendly. You just had to know what did what and basically you were on the way. While the engine was under construction, some debate was given to its name. It was rumoured that the engine was going to be called Wasatch in, the, in the honour of the mountain in which the engines worked. However, after a worker scrolled the name of Big Roy on, on Engine 4000, the unusual yet very appropriate nickname stuck. In 1941, the first big boy rolled off the production line. It was the largest steam locomotive the world had ever seen. Despite its sheer size, it was not the heaviest. That title belonged to the 2884 Yellowstone Rail locomotive, built by the Dulop and Misabi Iron Range Company. The big boys were no lightweight, weighing in as much as a Boeing 747 and there was certainly no engine that even came close to the big boy's sheer length. 25 big boys were created in total, and they had a long and productive life hauling freight over the mountains. However, the increase in price of coal, the push for more cost of effective diesel power, and the sheer labour force keeping these engines going, started the downfall for the big boy. The last official run was on July 21st, 1959, However, many were kept well maintained until 1962 when they were withdrawn for good. With the exception of eight engines, the rest were sadly scrapped. Engine number 4014 was one of these workhorses. It was built in November 1941 and had a successful but unassuming career and travelled over a million miles in its 20 year service. 4014 was one of the lucky ones and ended up at the Rail Giants Train Museum in California. There, Big Boy spent 52 years sat in retirement. The museum, however, never gave up hope that they would one day see 4014 run again. So every day, while they were not allowed to fire her, they greased and oiled her and cared for her 
as though she would be ready for a day's work. The success of the big boy was never forgotten, and despite its long years of not being active, the public was still captivated by the engine. In 2012, the Union Pacific Railroad decided it would resurrect and dis restore one surviving big boy from the existing eight. All eight engines were examined. Thanks to the dedication of the museum and its great care, 4014 was deemed the most viable for restoration and with the museum's blessing, 4014 was moved to Wyoming to begin the restoration process. Following a two-year wait while the works was finishing the restoration of another engine, work began with the engine's disassembly in August 2016. For an engine of its size, it actually came apart rather quickly, and it only took six short months to complete. Thanks again to the museum, the engine was in good condition and only needed minor work. One major factor, however, was the conversion of the fuel from coal to oil. This was not unheard of in big boys, as 4005 underwent a similar conversion in the 40s, but it would make the engine easier to run, and the conversion only meant for the replacement of a firebox to a fire pan and an oil burner. The firebox, which was now defunct, was due to be recycled for another restoration. In March 2018, everything was ready to reassemble the engine once again. It only took 10 months to complete the assembly, and with a successful boiler test in 2019, it moved for the first time in over 52 years under its own power. It was in time for the Transcontinental Railroad's 150th anniversary celebrations. I have seen firsthand what can happen to an engine when it simply isn't looked after properly. Flying Scotsman, one of the most famous engines in the world, took over 10 years to finish its overhaul at the National Railway Museum. Unlike Big Boy, which is undoubtedly more complex, Scotsman had a lot of faults and its neglect from some of its former owners showed. When the overhaul started, the museum realised she was in a worse state than, pre than her previous owners had made out. But thanks to the National Railway Museum and its dedicated fans, we have the treasure preserved for the nation and for many generations to come. Flying Scotsman will never be sold on or end up in the hands of private collectors again. The quick turnaround for the restoration is a standing testament to the Rail Giants Museum itself and its dedicated staff. If it wasn't for the staff's due diligence and care over the engines, then there may be no more big boys on the rails again. I like to think that every time they see a big, they see the big boy grace the rails again or whistle in delight at being out and about, they can attribute that they did this. So while I'm not likely to see Big Boy or the museum in the flesh, I personally would like to say a massive thank you to them. In fact, I'd like to say a big thank you to all of those who volunteer and look after our history, whether it be out on the museums or in the lines, I wish 4014 many years of railroading to come.